This morning at family time, sure, back to school is coming up quick, but we're still soaking up the final days of summer vacation and things are getting wild here on the roadshow because we have sent Brendan back to Roger Williams Park Zoo to meet some animals who don't typically get to see our show. Good morning, Brendan. Good morning, Will. That's right. We are here live at Roger Williams Park Zoo. I know what you're thinking. Oh, they're finally returning Brendan to the zoo. No, that's not why I'm here today, although I do love being at this place. I wouldn't mind living here because it's so cool and they have amazing things happening. And joining us, as always, is Dr. Jeremy Goodman, Executive Director here. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I am great. It's so nice to be here. There are always amazing things happening here. Now, we were just moments ago surrounded by pronghorns. A few of them have left. There's one behind you. What do we need to know about these guys? So pronghorn are amazing animals. They are the second fastest land mammal. So uh, here at the zoo, we actually have the two fastest animals. Everyone knows the cheetah, right. uh, but people don't, aren't very familiar with the pronghorn and they can get over 50 miles per hour in, in short bursts and they can actually outrun the cheetah in, in uh, longer races. So uh, cheetah is more of a, a sprinter and these guys are, are built for long distance. I think they could take us in the roadshow car. They might be able to beat us off the line and they're so friendly. They're so docile. Um, really what you, I was asking you, are they of the the goat family, but you said they're really of their own family, aren't they? They are. They're, they're also known as the American antelope, but they're not actually an antelope. Uh, they're really in their own family, and they're actually, uh, their closest relatives are the giraffes and okapis. So um, they're very unique animals, one of a kind here in North America. You know, they're very friendly. I tried interviewing them. How are you this morning? Like most guests, they don't want to talk to me, but you're the exception, Dr. Goodman. And when people come here, they can really get up close and personal with these animals, can't they? They can, not quite as close as we are right now, but uh, yeah, they're out here and uh, they're in our exhibit uh, North American area with our wild turkey. And you can really uh, get to know these animals and really get to appreciate them. And that's what we're all about here. Is Absolutely. You really, appreciation is key. Right when you walk over, those they're so friendly. They're staring at us. They're ready to go. They're ready to meet us. Can, may I feed them today or are they hungry? Uh, you can try. We have <laughs> some, some food here. So All right, just here grab we go. a handful. We're going to get in on this. You boys, do they have names? They do. So uh, in here with us uh, right now, we have Kitty Savannah. Kitty, I Montana. got food. <laughs> right here. There they go. Now I'm their friend, right? They've been kind of circling us. They have been, and, and these guys are a success story. Uh, pronghorn were disappearing from the plains of, of the western United States, and uh, through a lot of protections, they're coming back. But there are, are still pockets of animals that are endangered. The Sonoran pronghorn is disappearing, and uh, zoos are working on, on repopulating that whole population. And uh, great things are happening at the zoo all year round. Talk about uh, what you have coming up later this summer. We're, the summer is unfortunately rapidly drawing to a close, but there's still many great days ahead, aren't there? Absolutely. And we have uh, Brew at the Zoo coming up this Saturday. Unfortunately, it is sold out. People, you have to get your tickets early because it is one of the most popular events here in Rhode Island. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. Over 200 uh, different types of brews here. And then we have our zip line opening up on September 1st as well. So we're really excited about that in our new Explore and Soar area. You know me, I'm Mr. Thrill Seeker, so I'm ready for that. We're ready for you as well. <laughs> well, these are the pronghorns. This is Dr. Jeremy Goodman. Thank you as always. It's been a pleasure. It's always great to be here. I'm going to continue feeding these guys. Look, I've made some new friends. I'm not sure these are fit for human consumption. I won't be sampling. Much more from the zoo in just a bit. For now, back to you. Welcome back. Although we're reaching the end of August and many kids are going to be heading back to school soon, it doesn't mean that the summer fun is over. Brendan is live at Roger Williams Park Zoo for a look at what's going on. It looks like you got a furry friend behind you. Yes, Michaela, we are here at Roger Williams Park Zoo having a great time this morning. We always have a great time when we are here and we have, I believe behind me, oh my goodness, he's made his way this way. Dr. Jeremy Goodman is here with me again, but this right here is Riley, a two-toed sloth, correct? That is correct. He's a Linnaeus uh, two-toed sloth, and uh, he's one part of our collection. He's actually going to be one of the stars of our new rainforest that opens up next year. Well, I have many more questions about Riley. It's quite an angle we have here uh, <laughs> right now. But before we get to him, talk about that exhibit, which is coming up next summer. So it's really exciting. It's the largest project we've ever done here at the zoo, and it's going to be a South American rainforest with incredible animals like our two-toed sloth with um, lots of monkeys in there, parrots, brightly colored songbirds, toucans, piranhas, and, and the star of the show is going to be the giant otter. Giant otters reach over six feet long, and they're an endangered species from Brazil. So we're going to be one of only nine facilities in this country to have them. So we're really excited, and uh, I'm sure Riley here will be putting on a show as well. Yeah, Riley. 
is he's already putting on quite the show, if you ask me right here this morning. Now, I'm going to make a little bit of a, a humorous remark here. We were joking earlier because you said the sloth usually doesn't like to come out until after 10. Uh, he doesn't, uh, you know, emerge from his trailer, if you will. Why is it that they don't like getting started until a little later in the day? I, I, I have the same, you know, feeling myself when facing the day. But why is that for these guys? Oh, well, sloths, uh, they take a little bit of a while to warm up. Everything moves at their own pace. So um, in the morning, uh, just a little slower to get out of bed, a little slower to, to start their day. And uh, um, But Riley here actually likes to have uh, eggs for breakfast just like we do sometimes. So uh, he's a big fan of scrambled eggs. And uh, you can actually feed him some oh, if you like. He and I have so much in common. I love this. Riley, you ready, buddy? You hungry, pal? There you go. Oh, I've made a fast friend. I'm just like you. I don't like getting out of bed, and I enjoy eggs for, for breakfast, and I actually do that around my house as well. But really, talking about conservation, you know, that's kind of what this upcoming rainforest exhibit is all about. We need to preserve for those next generations, don't we? We do. The rainforest is disappearing, and, and the whole theme of our new exhibit is going to be the, the impact that people make. People don't realize that right here in Rhode Island, we have an impact on the rainforest. So that's our big message is that our actions matter and we're really gonna to try to teach people all the things they can do to, to help save these incredible animals. Can I get Riley some bacon and toast as well while I'm at it? Just the eggs, please. Well, he seems very friendly, very docile, and we are really happy that he decided to join us. Now, what is his day like? I mean, I know he likes to take it easy, but will, will it be a lot of this? Does he venture out at all? What is it like? So they spend their whole life upside down, and they spend most of it sleeping. Uh, in the wild, they're, they're foraging for, uh, for fruits and vegetables, things along those lines, which they get here at the zoo, a nice, balanced, nutritious diet. Um, but they spend their whole time uh, upside down. That's that's how they mate. That's how they live. That's how they walk. And one of the things that people don't realize, believe it or not, for an animal that slow, they are great swimmers. Interesting. All right. Well, maybe we can have Michael Phelps <laughs> set it up. He can take on a sloth. Dr. Goodman, thank you very much. Thank you. Always good to be here at the zoo. This, of course, is Riley, the two-toed sloth. I'm Brendan Kirby, the two-footed human sloth. We're going to have much more from uh, the zoo in just a bit. For now, back to you. Hey guys, that's right. We are here live at Roger Williams Park Zoo. It's been an incredible morning. They have so many amazing animals here, so many tremendous exhibits that are both entertaining and informative. You can learn so much fun for people, no matter what the age. But uh, we are here this morning. I want to welcome Jennifer Hennessy. Now she, I hope you're recording. I hope those DVRs are rolling because you are about to meet. Behold the great Kinkajou, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, good morning, Jen. How are you? How are you? Good. Is the kinkajou a little uh, nervous, stage fright? She's sleepy. Okay. She is nocturnal, so she is used to sleeping during the day um, and being active at night. Now, your role within here, certainly you work uh, with the sloth as well. Talk about really what you do. There's a lot of maintaining that needs to be done in this area, isn't there? The entire zoo, really. Yes. There's a lot of maintaining. A lot of my job is cleaning and taking care of the animals. But my favorite part of the job is behavior management, and that's making sure the animals are both psychologically and physically healthy. You can do the same with me if you need to. <laughs> behavior maintenance. maintenance. And I'm, I'm looking at some of the notes here because these really are remarkable uh, creatures indigenous to what part of the world here? They are from Central and South America. They can also be found in parts of Mexico. And you were saying that they don't really respond too well to touch. They, they kind of do their own thing. And that's why we need to sort of be respectful when we're around them, right? Yes, it's more that kinkajous are notorious for bonding with a few people. And then they can be very nervous around new people. Izzy has her back to me, I've noticed. She, she, <laughs> she Like does. most females. <laughs> I think she's just waking up, honestly. Now, are you able to sort of exit? Oh, there she is. Look how cute right there. Now you have your back to me. There's this is a no win situation. <laughs> Yeah, she is very cute. And I understand there's something that sort of we can execute here together. Oh, yeah. yeah, so for some of our keeper talks here, Izzy um, will come over onto the railing. I'll come out and talk to all the people about all of our fabulous adaptations. And then we'll walk over here and she'll run along the railing. And can we try that now? Yeah, absolutely. Right, should I walk down there with you or should I? Oh, all right. I'm going to go. For, yeah, because so, we needed to jump on you. So I'm going to moonwalk my way down here. We'll walk together and this is going to be really something else. No problem. Oh, you can actually come on this side oh. of the greenhouse. That would right. be All right. Yeah. I'm over here. Over here. I'm walking. Oh, I'll stand over here. Yeah, you stand right there. Um, so sometimes she will go to the bathroom first. Oh, from your lips to God's ears. Yeah, so she, she may have to do a potty break. 
That's okay. Uh, looks like she's raising her tail, and that could happen. But that's all part of the process. I mean, these are animals. <laughs> I said I hoped those DVRs were rolling. Uh, this should have been segment number two. Oh no, she almost went down. I know, we usually start the other way, don't we, honey? Okay, now will she walk down the railing? Yes, yeah, she will. Okay, let's go for a Whenever stroll. Whenever she's ready. Here Jennifer, we go. Izzy and me. Oh, we're up for a leisurely stroll. That's very, oh, cool. How about that? Demonstrating a prehensile tail right now, one of her fabulous adaptations. Fabulous new necklace you have. Yes, well, I thank you. And she also has uh, feet that point can rotate downward, so she can descend with her head first. Oh She's goodness. really well at it. She has great adaptations for the branches. Sure, and I, people watching right now, why is Brendan so far away from the guests? But we are doing that to maintain not only the space for her, but we don't want her, like you said, to accidentally leap onto me. Which she really wants to do right now, I think. <laughs> are you sure about that? I think she does. And talk about about the educational uh, component here when the kids come in here you know meeting Izzy even though she may not be totally 100% understanding of what's going on the the children the young people no matter what the age we really need to continue to educate ourselves don't Absolutely. we she, uh, Izzy does a great job connecting kids <laughs> she wants your microphone oh <laughs> <laughs> By being right in front, kids can see how cool she is. Um, she really makes that connect connection with the children, and it you makes. Care if she climbs on. I, I do. Oh, she does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she um she can be unpredictable. It's one of the reasons they do not make great pets. Right. Yeah, even though she's adorable, and I can understand that want and yearn, but they don't. They're nocturnal. They sleep during the day, not during our active period usually. And um, yeah, they can become aggressive sometimes and it can give a really nasty bite. So well, she's been a very... Enjoy her at the zoo. She's been a very good <laughs> guest, as have you, Jen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, you guys, this is just a small sim. Jen's done. She's had enough of me. Yeah. Izzy, Izzy the kinkajou has had enough of me. Everyone's had enough of me. Even you probably by this point here at the zoo have had enough of me. Lots of great things are happening here. For now, back to you.